Our business members and our board members are what keep us motivated and give us new ideas to keep the Jasper Chamber fresh and moving forward with new ideas and new ideas and goals. Deidre and Tony will share some of that information with you in just a bit. Although some members are recruited by ambassadors and board members, many of our members just simply walk in the front door and request a membership application. To me, that means the chamber is visible and active and an organization that businesses want to be a part of and want to be members of. Thank you, all of you that are here today, for your membership in the Jasper Chamber. A key person in the chamber organization is the one that greets each visitor that walks in the front door. Carolyn Gobert is our office manager coming on board about two and a half years ago. Carolyn is friendly, fun, courteous, efficient, and just an all-around great person. Let's recognize Carolyn and thank her for her service to the chamber. I'd also like to recognize this year my husband Gil for all the work he does at the chamber and Virginia Caudill for the work that she's done over the past year with the Small Business Development Center. I also would like to recognize any elected officials who are present with us today. Please stand if you are an elected official or if you are here representing someone. The Chamber Ambassadors serve a very important part of our organization and they attend many of our events and our ribbon cuttings. If any of you would like to be an ambassador, please let me know and we can get you signed up for that. So if any ambassadors are here, please stand and thank you for your dedication to the chamber. Some other important people that are here today are some active military and veterans. So if you are active military or a veteran, please stand up and thank you for your service to our country. <laughs> Deidre Church has had a busy year as president of the board of directors. She has encouraged board members to be more involved in events and activities and in recruiting new members and always making sure that the board meetings were efficient, but fun and interactive. We've had both in-person and still virtual board meeting options, adding that balance when needed. And we'd like to thank Jason Raker at Jasper Engines for facilitating that virtual option this year. He could not be here today, but um, he is on our board. Before Deidre tells us about this past year, I'd like to thank her for her service and present her with a gavel and the president's plaque. Yay. Thank you. I'm so excited and so sad to give away my big gavel, but now I'll have a little one, so that's good. Um, hi, friends. My name is Cedar Church. As Nancy said, I'm the director of the foundation at Memorial Hospital, and I'm so happy to be here with you all today. I'm a little bit sad, though, because that means that my time as president is coming to an end. It has certainly been a beautiful and almost Hallmark-type movie year. For those of you who were here last year, um, I got called out saying that I should be in a Hallmark movie. I still have not received a call, so we're so quick. Uh, it would not be right if I didn't take time to recognize one half of the reasons that I moved to Jasper. My mom, Martha, is here today, and uh, my dad wishes that he could be here. He had a small procedure this morning. He's fine, but he got uninvited because I did not want him to embarrass me. So thank you, Mom, <laughs> for being here today and for bringing me back to such a special place as Jasper. Abraham Lincoln once said, I like to see a man proud of the place in which he lives. I like to see a man live in it so that his place is proud of him. And that's how I have approached my time with the Jasper Chamber and why I love the city of Jasper so much. I think it's a great representation of the community in which we live. 
I'm, per I'm sure that you've all heard and seen the expressions of wonder as our out-of-town guests experience what a special place it is here that we have in Jasper. But then they go on to learn what special people we have here too. The pride, the gratitude, the generosity, the innovation, the faith, and the attention to our people's well-being is hard to rival. And I'm really looking forward to digging into that a little bit more when we do our panel here in just a bit. But for a moment, I want to focus on the amazing work that the Jasper Chamber of Commerce has done so far this year. From pet care to hobbies, to parks, to specialty services, the variety of new businesses popping up in Jasper is really exciting. And we are honored to have helped host nearly 30 ribbon cuttings so far this year. We've started close to 400 Jasper Chamber of Commerce members, hosted time out from business events, welcomed guests to Chamber Office for the Digital Town Series, and enjoyed our partnership with the Indiana Small Business Development Center, seeing many new small businesses flourish. I would also like to thank Virginia for her time and her help in, in that role, and we're excited to welcome Grant Sherpick as our new area's world navigator. I also want to thank Carolyn Gober for her work in the Chamber Office to keep us running. I'm going to go a little bit rogue now, Nancy, I'm sorry. On October the 5th, 1987, the number one song on the Billboard charts was Here I Do Again by White Snake. It's a great song, right? The city of Jasper, Indiana, was booming with a population of over 10,000 people, and Nancy Eckerly took the helm as the executive director of the Jasper Chamber of Commerce. Now fast forward nearly 37 years later, Here I Go Again was named in the top 10 best hair metal band songs of all time. The population of Jasper has increased by 67%, nearing 17,000. A lot has changed around the city of Jasper, but one thing has remained constant, and that is the leadership and commitment of Nancy Eckerly with the Jasper Chamber of Commerce. With the number of residents increasing, the number of businesses and opportunities for entrepreneurs in the area has grown as well. And Nancy has been there every step of the way. And this is why Nancy was named Indiana's Chamber Director of the Year this year. As a trip down. So as a tribute from all of us, as you came in today, many of you may have received a little white card. It has space where you can write a note of congratulatory um, messages to Nancy, but also share what it is that you love about Jasper. And on behalf of the board, we will put those all together into a keepsake book um, and give those to Nancy as a token of gratitude for how hard she works to make Jasper great each and every day. Um, Whenever you leave, there will be a little drop box. You can also grab any of us who are on the board and give the cards there. We also have some photos. Sorry, Nancy. You can thank your daughter um, from Nancy's time at the chamber that you can take a look at it as well. So please join me in congratulating Nancy for her much deserved recognition as Indiana's Chamber Director of the Year. Work, and it is my distinct pleasure to recognize this year's officers and outgoing board members. If you'll please hold your applause until the end. Our vice president this year is Tony Farmer from Smithville. Congratulations. Our secretary this year is Lisa Bauer, representing the Heart of Jasper. Unfortunately, he was able to be, unable to be here today, but we would still like to recognize Matt Vogler from New Lord Sons. He was our treasurer, and he will also be leaving the board. Other outgoing directors include Ed Cole, formerly of Boy Strong, Tony Matthewson of the St. Charles Health Campus. Trisha Mullis, formerly of Best Home Furnishings, and Jason Breaker from Jack Brands is in Transmissions. Please join me in thanking these generous people and giving other time to support the Chamber's mission.
And finally, before I move on to the really exciting part, the President's Community Excellence Award presentation, I'd like to end my speech with something I saw the other day that really spoke to me um, and reminded me of Jasper and the Pete Fitz people. And I share this a challenge to myself, but also to each of you as you go about your days. As the world struggles to figure everything out, I'll be holding the doors open for strangers, letting people cut in front of me in traffic, especially in Newton Street, <laughs> saying good morning, <laughs> keeping babies entertained in grocery lines, stopping to talk to someone who looks lonely, generously tipping, giving kids a thumbs up, being patient with sales clerks and smiling at passersby, and I'll buy a stranger a cup of coffee. Why? Because I refuse to live in a world where kindness and joy is invisible. Be nice to a stranger, give grace to your friends and coworkers who are having a tough day, and be forgiving with yourself. Together, let's make love visible in Jasper. Thank you. Thank you. Now, speaking of making love visible, this year's Jasper Chamber of Commerce President's Community Excellence Award winner does just that. In a letter of support for this year's winner, the author wrote, he is an inspiration to us all. His life is not about personal gain, but it's about taking care of people and caring for their needs. Another said, he is Jasper's greatest ambassador, with an uncanny ability to treat everyone as a friend. This year's Community Excellence Award winner is a former Boy Scout Distinguished Citizen Award recipient, former president of both the Jasper Chamber of Commerce and the Jasper Greater Downtown Business Association. He's a current member of the Jasper JCs, Knights of Columbus, Jasper Moose Lodge, and a charter member of both the Jasper Optimist Club and the Dubois County Sportsman Club. He has served on too many committees, boards, and associations to name. And I believe most impressively, he is a rock solid supporter of people when they need him most. Whether they're visiting Siebert's building store for the happiest moment of their life, or perhaps the saddest, he is without a doubt one of the best in business and one of the nicest in Jasper. Please join me in recognizing and welcoming to the stage Jim Siebert, third generation of the Just a few. <laughs> Congratulations, Jim. Thank you. I'm glad you didn't go fishing. <laughs> Those of you that know me very well know why, know why I have this nap that <laughs> Because I get emotional, just like my dad used to do. <clears throat> Many years ago, I was the, the, uh, the leader of this outfit, the Jasper Chamber of Commerce, 1991. And that's where, when we started this, uh, this special presentation. The first winner was Alvin Rutzer, and he was uh, the first president of Jasper JCs. I'm sorry, I'm the Chamber of Commerce also. And it's such an honor to, to be named with some of these outstanding people that have been in this place. Uh, my dad was the second or third honoree, and that's what makes me most proud. Anything I can do close to what my dad did, it makes me feel like I've done well. The, uh, the Chamber of Commerce years ago met at the Schnitzelbank, and there were some characters on our board. One of the guys 
some of you may remember Jim Leavers, he helped serve the coffee. We all thought it was so, so neat, so funny, so we bought him an apron <laughs> to serve his coffee with. Anyway, uh, I'm so proud to be here in front of y'all. My dad had the, the desire that made your community better than the way you found it. And that's, he lived by those words. He also thought it was important not to be the richest guy in the graveyard, but to do right by the Lord. He was very religious, and I say the same night prayer every night that he and mom taught me when I was a little boy. Not that I'm that religious, but I, I do believe in the higher power. I want to thank you all very much for being here. I'm sorry. I'm emotional. I'm sorry. But it's from my heart. <laughs> Thanks again. The next board president is excited to take on this challenge. He will be sharing some ideas for moving ahead in 2025. He is dependable, works hard at everything he does, and is eager to encourage members to be involved and also willing to offer his own skills and services. I would like to introduce the 2025 Jasper Chamber Board President, Tony Farmer. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, quite an experience to, to see family walk in like that. That was special. So uh, well done and congratulations again to our winner. Uh, thanks to everyone here for choosing to spend your afternoon supporting the Jasper Chamber of Commerce. I want to introduce the rest of uh, my fellow board members for 2025. So yet another list of people and companies. So when you hear your name, please stand and we'll give you a round of applause. Uh, the answer. Dalton Benny of Benny's True Value Hardware. I think Dalton's here today. Rebecca Murder from Kimball Electronics is our secretary. Dalton is our vice president. Mary Champion from Reedy Jasper will be our treasurer. Deanna Barr from WITZ. Lisa Bauer, Heart of Jasper. Kim Hagen, Old National Bank. Jason Hagen from Meyer Distributing. Aaron Kidwell from Mentors for Youth. Pedro Mendez from Memorial Hospital. Those are some big shoes to fill. <laughs> Melissa Miller from Premier Property Management. Mo Peraza from Matrix. Jason Rumbach from Master Brand Cabinets. Ken Seeger from Springs Valley Bank and Trust. Brent Seibert from Jasper Engines. Natalie Temple from Meyer Distributing. Kim Wiegen from GAB, German American Bank, and a soon-to-be-named member from Hoosier Hills Credit Union. So if everyone could give them a round of applause. So I'm honored to stand here before you as I begin my third year on the Chamber's Board. So over the past two years, I've had the privilege of learning from and observing leadership of those who came before me. So one person I particularly want to thank today, again, is Deidre. Deidre's energy, her commitment, and this natural ability to lead has, has been inspiring. I remember Deidre's speech at this very event last year. She spoke about a return to Jasper, to the family farm, uh, and how much this community means to her and her family. Her words were genuine, they were heartfelt, and you can feel the deep love she has for this area. So it's, it's very fitting today that Deidre is moderating a panel of folks that just like her 
called Jasper Home. So her story's a great one. I know today's conversation will be equally insightful. So throughout my professional career, I've had the opportunity to attend many other Chamber of Commerce meetings all over the state. And I can tell you for sure, if you've been to one Chamber meeting, you've been to one Chamber meeting. They, they vary greatly. There's no real consistent template that I've noticed for how they operate. But our chamber here in Jasper is unique. There's a clear way things are done, and if other chambers are smart, they try to duplicate. Maybe the secret is out now with the new award, the type of work Nancy does. It's easy to get swept up in the energy and the passion Nancy brings to this organization. You can show up, you can pay attention, and you still find yourself sometimes just caught up in the momentum of all the initiatives she drives. However, there's more to leading than following that momentum. So as I step into my role as president, my focus is on listening. Not just me. This is a challenge that I extend to all the board members that I just introduced. Nancy's energy fuels many of our projects and events. And while it's important to support that, it's equally important for us to listen. To listen to our members to listen to their needs and to ensure we're responsive to those needs. And listening is an active process. It's not simply saying, I understand. Often we say, I understand, just to close a conversation, whether with a spouse, a friend, or a colleague. But real understanding is demonstrated through action, through dedicating time and energy to show that we've heard and acknowledged what was said. So my challenge to our board this year is to show our understanding without having to say it. Let's make sure our actions prove we're paying attention. Let's be committed to listening with purpose so the Jasper Chamber of Commerce continues to grow and thrive in ways that truly serve our members and our community. So one of the first items in our agenda for our new board came from a simple conversation at a recent meeting. We will use the available resources of the board to highlight individual board members and the expertise they bring to the chamber. Our goal is to align individuals with the business community, with specific board members and drive valuable one-to-one -one interactions. And who knows, those connections can lead to valuable resources like the Chamber's Small Business Service Center and links to financial institutions, professional services, mentorship opportunities, and access to contacts that will help continue the development of small business and entrepreneurial growth. So thank you again for your support, your trust, and your, your commitment to making Jasper an even better place to live and work. Let's make this year one of meaningful action, listening, and growth. So with that, I'm going to ask our panel members to the stage. You can come up this way or right to the front. And I'm going to ask Zedra and her last action here to return to the podium. Thank you very much. And the microphones and sharp objects like scissors for women things <laughs> to find a new avenue for that after this year. So when we were brainstorming what we wanted to do as far as a keynote speaker this year. Thank you. Uh, we thought it would be really fun to do something a little bit different where we have some people from all over. This is live, Kevin. Don't be saying anything bad. Um, from different walks of life, that is on, that can share with us what their experience is of living in jazz. I don't think that that's going to work for me to sit there, so I'm just going to hang out behind you guys. Um, so we are going to have a series of questions, and we're going to go through them. They have received the questions beforehand, so I'm not going to surprise you with anything. I'm just going to stand right here behind you, Chip, the whole time. I don't know what it is. I'll just keep moving. All right, so we're going to start by asking them all to introduce themselves and share with us what your favorite hidden gem is in Jasper. And this is a quick round run. Okay, we're going to start with you, Mel. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Melanie Powell. Um, I am born and raised here in Jasper, uh, went to college in Indianapolis, and I promised my parents that I would never move back to Jasper ever again, ever, ever. 
So I meet this guy on my right. He's two years ahead of me in college. He gets a job in Jasper, and I am very quickly taught, don't ever say never. So uh, fast forward, we are so grateful that our journey has brought us back to Jasper to raise a family. Um, I would tell you that I think one of the gems of Jasper is actually the rooftop of the River Center. So for anyone that has not seen that, I think it just gives uh, a different view, a different lens of our community and something that we can be proud of. All right, uh, Kevin Powell, I've been down here 22 years. I uh, actually grew up in northern Indiana in a town about double the size of Jasper called Warsaw. Uh, similar to uh, my wife, I never thought I would go back to Warsaw and thought I would stay in Indianapolis uh, forever, and I uh, quickly proved that wrong uh, after uh, graduating after a few months, uh, realized Indianapolis was not meant for me. Uh, so uh, here I am 22 years later. Uh, as far as the hidden gem, um, man, we have so many great things here in this community, uh, but similar to how I answer the question when I'm asked, you know, what makes Jasper Engine special? I think the same answer applies for Jasper, and that's our people. Um, there is not anybody that would need anything and would have a hard time finding somebody that would help them with whatever that is, time, talent, treasure, it doesn't matter. Um, if there's a need, uh, people are there, and, and this community truly has a lot of special people that would do anything for anybody. I am Chip Morris. I've lived in Jasper nearly 26 years. Um, grew up in central Indiana, and uh, work at Jasper Engines have been there just over 24 years uh, this past week, a couple weeks ago actually. Um, the hidden gems, my two passions outside of my family and the three words that I may talk about later that I have in my, in my mind are sports and music. And I've been able to do both of them here in town. So I, the, the gems that I pick out are the places where I can go be entertained with music to start with, but there's so many other things that that we have and as a blessing in this small town. So I, I point out Jasper Community Arts, I point out the Astra, I point out any place that downtown on the square, the Schaefer Barn, anywhere you may go to listen to live music or be entertained. I think we have that as, as someone that has been able to live in other places, both big and small. You don't get that. You just don't get that in a town the size of Jasper. So I'm very thankful for those things. Hello, I'm Ibra Benjavar. I, uh, I'm from Los Angeles, so pretty 180 from Jasper. <laughs> um, but yeah, in 03, we came here to Jasper for a family wedding. And in 04, my parents packed their car and we drove 36 hours east to come here. So I've uh, been here for 20 years. Um, actually, we had a little get together last month in August to celebrate that, um, which was fun. My hidden gem, I love to eat, so any restaurant is a gem, so uh, a big foodie guy, and just seeing the diversity in the, in the food here in the area is amazing. Um, also, I like sports, I'm into soccer, so seeing how well taken care of all the parks are in general um, is beautiful, so I think that's one thing that sometimes we uh, take for granted, but there's a lot of hardworking people behind uh, the scenes making all that happen. Thank you. Hi there, my name's Jeremiah, and um, we, I grew up actually in Martinsville, Morgantown area, just south of Indianapolis. We lived in Rockville, Indiana, we lived in South Carolina, I lived in Atlanta, and uh, we moved up here about seven years ago. Uh, my wife and I started the Next Chapter bookstore on the square, um, and I would say the hidden gym, it's not really hidden, I guess, but the Riverwalk and Parklands, I was at both of them yesterday. Uh, I just think they're amazing for families of people of every age to get together and uh, look. Hi, my name is Lauren Lane. Um, I am a nurse practitioner at Huntingburg Urgent Care with Memorial. Um, that's why I'm in scrubs and not business professional like the rest of you. So. You look great. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, let's see, I guess we'll talk about it later, but we've been here three years. I grew up in Knox County. Um, kind of in the middle, so that's why we're here now. Um, a hidden gem, I would say the Parklands also, because we're there often, but I think the Cultural Center, uh, there's just a lot to be utilized there, um, lots of programs and different activities, so I think that's a big one. And that was my better half. My name is Bryce Lane, and I'm from Tell City, so two 
polar opposites in the sports world. Moving to Jasper, Indiana, Knox County, and Tell City, I know it can be very heated when they're in, playing each other in sports, so it's, it's, it's ironic that we're here. Um, my, hidden gem, my hidden gem for Jasper would be cuisine related, similar to Eber, and it would be Miranda's Restaurant. Drive by it every single day after living here for two years. We finally decided to eat there on a Wednesday, which is their special evening. They have specials. It's one one dollar fifty margaritas and a dollar pupusa, so you can fill up and have a good time. I'm Virginia Caudill. Uh, my husband and I moved here four years ago. Uh, actually, he's not here right now because we're building a house. Um, which will explain why the hidden gem is as follows, Tom's appliances. <laughs> they're, they're really helpful, so there you go. Hi, my name is April Jones. Um, I'm with Cathedral Healthcare here in Jasper. Um, I have lived in Jasper for five years. I came with this guy. Um, I am originally from Titusville, Florida, very far away from here. <laughs> um, and I would say Jasper's hidden gem would be Jasper itself. Um, before I came here with him, I didn't even know Jasper existed. And I have absolutely fallen in love with Jasper and um, plan to live here for the rest of my life, so. Hello, uh, my name is Logan Jones with the Jasper Police Department. I'll try to lean this way because it's- uh, Try keeping it close to your mouth. Does that work? Oh, this is not what I do. Uh, <laughs> I am actually, I went to Washington. My mom remarried when I was around 12 or 13, so I'm kind of from the area. Um, just kept going to Washington. Um, and then I lived in Evansville for about 10 years, and that's where we met. I was a cop in Henderson, Kentucky for a few years, and then moved back here when an opening came up. So uh, that's kind of the background for me. Um, so hidden gems, I think they hit on everything. I think it's just the people. Um, you know, if you need something, you know where to get it, or you know somebody. Um, the hidden gems, like, I think the city itself, you can get everything that you want, but it's, you're so close to, you know, somebody with a farm or somewhere you can go that's outside the city, and you can enjoy that too. So that's kind of my thing. She's telling me to stop, so. <laughs> You did great, thank you. And thank you for the work that you do every day that's so important and we're glad that you're here. We also understand if you have to run off the stage real fast, hopefully not. Um, my hidden gem, I've lived here for almost four years. So I was born here in Jasper, moved away whenever I was about three and then moved back um, about four years ago, is the kids day on the square, which is going to be coming up on Saturday, hopefully weather permitting. Uh, if you have not gone to kids day on the square, it is so cool. It's been going on for 30 years, so maybe it's not a hidden gem, but um, my mom and I always go and it's just so fun to pull out all the different things that you get over the years. So if you have the chance to go do that. So diving right in, several of you are new to Jasper or somewhat new. We'll start with the lane you can get that you have the microphone. Um, how have you approached becoming involved socially and what advice would you give to somebody who is new in town? So socially, we wanted to find a place to move a small community that we could, you know, make our own splash, not a huge splash, but get involved within the community. And our kind of effort when we moved down here three years ago was anytime you get asked to go to an event or join an organization or just, just to someone's house for dinner. Always say yes, especially in those early months. Um, you're in a new place, you don't have any friends there. We didn't, we didn't really have any strong connections, any friends from high school or college. Um, we didn't grow up here, obviously. So anytime somebody asked us to do something, we always said yes, we always got out the door. Can't stay at home and make friends and, and fit in a community when you're sitting at home. I totally agree, I think that's really smart. Logan, April, anything to add to that? Um, I would just say getting involved in uh, community organizations. So I, this past year, um, joined the, um, uh, well, we renamed. We're now the Du Bois County ARC, the Advocacy for Recovery and Prevention Council. Um, so joining local coordinating councils, too. You get so involved within the community that way and meet a lot of people. Thank you. And Jeremiah, you're not new to town, but you have a new business. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, for us, it really started with church. Um, I don't know if there's a better way to really plug in very quickly than with church. Um, and then, similar to what you guys were saying, I think just 
being a part of your neighborhood, inviting people over, accepting invitations. Um, I think it starts with your neighbors and your block, wherever you're at, that you, um, you welcome people in and um, get to know people. I was gonna try. I was trying to get the third one going. It's not going to, but that's okay. We're gonna roll with two. So this one is gonna be directed to you two right here. What is the most noticeable difference you've experienced either in work or in your personal life that makes Jasper unique from your per previous locations? I'll let you start, Eber. You're a little bit different. <laughs> um, so yeah, population of, you said we grew from 10,060%. So um, I think that's maybe like a block in LA. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's a... a, a huge difference. Um, I arrived here in fifth grade. Obviously, as a fifth grader, you, you move to a new school, a new district, a new area, a new neighborhood. You have no friends. Um, so that was challenging for me at first. Uh, I was the only kid in, in the classroom that talked different, uh, that looked different, that had different color hair. Um, and at first, it was a culture shock overall. But, uh, you know, you, you slowly slow start adjusting and making friends and getting to know people and getting into the, rid the rid rhythm of things. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the the major differences that I that there is um, even now to to this day. Uh, I love serving on boards that help me represent and advocate for the Latino population and the Latino community, and I think that's uh, a huge plus. That's here in in, du in Dewey's County, Jasper area. We're always looking to uh, merge that gap between the Latino and the Anglo community, and it's a beautiful thing. Once you get it right, there's a lot of room for opportunity. Not because it hasn't happened. That doesn't mean um, it's wrong, it's just we haven't crossed that bridge yet, and um, networking events like this help take a huge step forward to, to get that accomplished. I would say work-wise is what I would want to address, and I can't speak for every business, I can speak for Jasper Engines, but I do believe it's a consistent message and a consistent result that we get throughout the community. And I, my, my thought was the, the ever-changing workforce uh, allowing, yet we still maintain our culture. And I can tell you at Jasper, we've changed unbelievably at Jasper Engines. Our culture has remained the same. And I think that's an important thing that I know I didn't see in previous places that I lived. Thank you. I wrote that down too. Culture, I think, is so special here. All right, the next question, I'm going to direct to Virginia and the Lanes and Jeremiah. What are the top one or two reasons that made you choose Jasper as a place to live? Virginia, we'll start with you. Uh, when we were looking for a, a spot to move from um, the Carmel area, we were looking for uh, hospitals, internet, and then just sort of the vibe, for lack of a better word, of a small town. Um, and Jasper fit Fit the bill. So, yeah. Lane's anything to add there? Sorry. Um, so, like we said, he's from Perry County. I'm from Knox County. So, it's in the middle of both our hometowns. Um, it was just kind of perfect location. So, when we met in college, we moved to Indy. We were up there for a couple of years. Um, and then we were like, you know what? We're ready to be closer to home. Um, I wasn't living in Perry County. I don't think he wanted to be in Knox. So, um, Dewey's County seems like a great option. So, <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> um, so yeah, we ended up in Du Bois, and it's been a great place for us. Um, there's great people here. Um, it's a really vibrant community, um, and you know we all, we looked at somewhere where we'd want to raise children, um, and it's been um, just like I said, the people that you meet here are outstanding, and they're going to be there for you no matter what, no matter if you're new to the area, if you've been here your whole life. So um, it was a big reason why we stayed. Thank you. Yes, perfect. So I'm going to come at this from a little bit of a different angle. Um, we were, well, let me just say this. Our, this may sound weird to some of you, and that's okay. But um, for us, the reason we, we stayed here was because of God. Um, we were actually about to move back to Atlanta. Um, we had our house on the market. We'd accepted a position in Atlanta. Half our house was packed. We were just ready for our house to sell and throw everything and go. Um, and just long story short, um, God shut that door in dramatic fashion, as he sometimes does. And at the same time, he planted the seed to start this 
crazy idea of a bookstore and coffee shop where we could be a light in our community. Um, and all of a sudden, we took one step and every door started swinging open. Um, so the reason we're here is, is God. <laughs> So um, that's really our number one reason, but I want to make sure to say, like, in the process of opening our shop, man, our eyes were open to what an incredible community we have, um, how the community has rallied around us from the top to the bottom. I mean, starting with Heart of Jasper and people like Kate Schwenk and Virginia Cabo, um, people coming along our side. Uh, we, we received a grant. The, the resources that are available to us were incredible. We had dozens and dozens and dozens of friends and volunteers that stepped in to help us do all the construction and make it happen. We had uh, over I mean, several thousand books donated for this to happen. And I, I told Nancy, I, I really don't think we could have done this in any other part of the country. Um, this, this place is special and um, it really opened our eyes to what we have here. So God and community. We love that. We're glad you're here too. Melanie, you're one of our panelists that grew up here and you're back here and you're raising your kids here with this guy. What opportunities are you seeing for our young people in Jasper that you didn't experience growing up? Well, I think there are a lot of opportunities. Um, getting involved was a message that Mr. Hubster at Jasper Middle School shared at the first parent conference or the parent, meet the parent, meet the teacher night. Um, and that message really extended on to Jasper High School where Mr. Mock was also like, just get involved, do one thing, just pick one thing. So um, both, both, like I said, both of those educators shared endless ways to get involved. So there's anything, as we all know, athletics in Jasper is second to none. Um, in addition to that, we've got theater and choir and performing arts and BPA and FFA and and the list just goes on and on. I mean, and to answer your question, Deidre, robotics, motorsports, all of those things, I don't know if that was around in Jasper High School when I was there, but I'm continually impressed by that. Um, then in addition, there's wildlife and young life and Bosco and the well. So there's really, you know, like Hupster and Mr. Mock said, there's really not, not a reason to not be involved. But both Kevin and I have been really impressed with a, a small group at Jasper High School and with the city of Jasper called the Mayor's Youth Leadership Council. I'm not sure if you all are aware of that or not, but this is led by Mayor Von der Heide and Lisa Bauer. Um, I, I'm going to read their, their mission. Um, I don't want to butcher it. To develop leadership skills and empower students with engaging service opportunities that benefit the Jasper community. So this group of high school students, they raised funds and um, have the, or installed, I guess, the, the Welcome to Jasper sign. They have added communication boards at all of our parks. Um, they have also, I mean, it, uh, murals, but they had also sanded and painted. I mean, we have lost a couple pairs of shoes and a couple of outfits to the paint on the bridges at uh, the disc golf course. So just some really awesome projects um, and leadership, you know, to our youth, which has been excellent. So another another example that I wanted to share with you that I know was not um, at Jasper High School when, when I was there. Um, over Labor Day, we had the opportunity to be at our cabin by Potoka Lake, and our our best friend's son, who is 17, planned his cross country flight. 17 year old flying a plane by himself. I. I, as a parent, I'm standing on the deck with his parents, with you know everyone that was with us, we're waving, we're cheering, we're, I, I'm just baffled that a 17-year-old can be flying a plane. So he has his student pilot's license and will get his, let me see, let me make sure I see, the, it's a two-year program at Jasper High School with the Toka Valley Co-op um, in partnership with the Huntingburg Airport. And um, so he'll have his pilot's license before he's 18. So it, incredible opportunities for young people, but more than that, incredible people that are mentoring our youth, that are stepping forward to help out, to partner in ways that we've not done before. So I think just really, really excellent work. I was so amazed at all the opportunities and the partnerships with our businesses and our high school. It's really, really special. Eber, you're up. 
we have seen, you mentioned this a little bit, <laughs> we have seen the cultural landscape of our population in Jasper evolving over the past several years, and it's a great thing. How do you believe this has enhanced the experience of calling Jasper home? It's amazing, I love it. Um, I'm a big culture guy, so seeing this cross with us here is absolutely amazing. I love seeing how people, how dedicated people are. Um, a few years back, I don't want to bring this, whoever saw me, I'm sorry. I got up on the stage and danced to the Poffenweiler. Is that correct? Poffenweiler, okay, yes, um, close. But yeah, it's, it's, it's those things that, that get you that, that get me into just seeing and learning and, and understanding different cultures, different ways, ways of life. Um, and at the same time, just seeing how closely related we are to one another. Um, family, culture, celebration, music, food, all that is instilled in me growing up. So um, I absolutely love culture. I think Jasper has an amazing culture behind it. We are all so proud um, of where we're from. And yeah, it's definitely grown uh, in, in the last several years. We, we've all seen it, our, our businesses have seen it, inc increase in, in diversity and inclusion. And I think it's a beautiful step forward because I do believe that it's, it's just gonna keep on, uh, it, it's gonna become the, the powerhouse of, of businesses to, to be able to accept and, and cultivate that, the culture that everyone's uh, bringing together. So yeah, I love it. Thank you. I'm gonna pass your microphone down to the lane so you all get to work with a lot of different personality and people types in your careers. Do you have anything to add to that question? Yeah, so we kind of, she said that she prepped us, so um, we were kind of thinking about, you know, what are some of the positives of having this cultural diversity and seeing new cultures that have been coming to Du Bois County. And, you know, we were really thinking about it and it just expands your worldview. Um, we can be close-minded and stay in our little bubble in Southern Indiana. Um, but when you see these other cultures come, it really opens your mind up to different possibilities um, and different ways of life. So just expanding that worldview, I think is really important and just to seeing how it can integrate with the great culture that's already here. Um, so I think those are um, big things, just, you know, not being close-minded, just being accepting. Um, I think Eva kind of said it earlier, um, just because things are different doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong. So just being open-minded to different ways um, and ideas and then seeing how you can integrate that um, to your everyday. Very well said, thank you. Chip and Kevin, you work alongside one another at Jasper Engines, your friends, right? <laughs> Most of the time, he says. When you're hiring people to work in Jasper, what are your biggest selling points? Can you give us your best elevator speech? And this is not a 40 floor building. <laughs> I know my wife took all my time earlier, so. Um, so again, like like I said earlier, I mean, I think it's not uncommon for most of our young people to be like, "Yep, I'm I'm jet set and I'm getting out of Dodge." You know, I don't I don't want the small town life. I don't think it it takes people too long to realize that there's a lot of good draws here. Um, when I'm trying to recruit people to Jasper, I mean, I I relate it to my experience in Indianapolis. I mean, if big city living's for you, great. You know, I didn't enjoy the 45 minute trip to the grocery store. I can be anywhere in Jasper in five to seven minutes. I didn't enjoy the crime. I didn't enjoy the traffic. Um, yeah, they've got bars and clubs and that kind of stuff, but yeah, that's cool for a little while. But you know, if you're looking for a place to really settle in, um, a lot of great industry, a lot of great Christian-founded companies, um, a great place to raise a family, someplace safe, uh, someplace with countless opportunities, I mean, Jasper is really the place uh, that you want to settle down. We are friends, my boy. <laughs> Most days, I sometimes upset Kevin. He never upsets me. <laughs> uh, outside of what Kevin said, I, I mean, I, in, in, in agreeing with Kevin, it's clean, it's safe. We have amazing schools with amazing teachers. We have parks, we have places to go work out. We have all the things that you don't, you know, while the big city does have it, we have things that the big city doesn't, and those mostly are good things. I did just a little research because I, I thought what I what I thought was true is true. I had to go to the internet. Now, whether you can trust all this stuff or not, I really don't know. But um, I looked at populations in the state of Indiana. And I just did the 15,000 to 20,000 population. And I looked at median income. If you want to talk to people about opportunities, 
if, if people, not the money's the end all be all, and I love Jasper Engines, but if every Thursday I didn't get money in my account, I'm gone, y'all, good to see y'all and stuff. But, but the opportunities that we have here, we need, to, we need to use them to take advantage of bringing new people to town. When I looked at these cities that are in this population between 15 and 20,000, outside of three bedroom communities that are next to Indianapolis or Chicago, Jasper has the highest median income, the highest of any city in that spatial, that space, between 15 and 20,000 people. That's because we have great opportunities and I think that's something that we can all share uh, when we're looking for new people. It's fantastic, it's really interesting. So the good news is that Jasper and Dubois County has seen a growth in census data, but that isn't the case everywhere. Virginia, how do you see Jasper evolving? What excites you about our future? Uh, well, I would say uh, following up on uh, the comment uh, that was just made, I believe that uh, Jasper would, will be evolving um, in a more diverse direction, uh, as well as uh, a direction that will be more inclusive of younger adults. Um, I, I know that there's been a push in a number of areas. People are starting to talk about it, not just at the state rural level when I was with the ISBDC, but, but also here locally. Um, I know there are multiple conversations going on about what can we do to keep the people who are here? Yes, it's a great place to raise your kids. Yes, it's got great schools. Um, yes, there's stuff to do, um, but uh, if you're a 20-something, you are probably going to leave because although those opportunities are here, um, most people of those ages aren't just as adult as they probably need to be when it comes to focusing on just economics, right? They want things to do. And so I believe, again, based on just the conversations that I know are going on, um, you know, uh, throughout the Southern Indiana and then specifically here in Jasper, um, there are um, a majority of folks who can make a difference in terms of bringing things to the city uh, for all ages to do, um, that are really pushing to do that. So I think as we evolve, my guess is the next five to eight years, hopefully, we'll be seeing more things for folks who are not eight and who are not 80. We'll see more things in the middle uh, that will end up not just attracting the folks, but then keeping them here and then not leaving uh, and coming back. So kind of having that, that middle ground. That's, and, and I look forward to that because I think um, without that, um, you get a very lopsided community. And uh, certainly you want businesses to continue and you want kids to stay here to be the successor to their parents' business or to their parents' farm uh, rather than uh, going and you know, seeking their fortune elsewhere. So I'm looking forward to that. I think it's coming. I think there are um, folks who are really focused on that, so. I think that's great insight, thank you. I'm gonna ask the same question to the Joneses. Do you guys have anything to add there? What excites you about the future of Jasper? Um, honestly, I would say that was a perfect answer. Um, that was, <laughs> um, you know, when we first were talking about moving here and I had lived in Evansville for so long, um, I was like, well, you know, what are we gonna do? <laughs> Um, but then very quickly I realized now that I'm here, I've been here for five years, when I have to go to Evansville, I just every second I'm like, can I go back? <laughs> um, so really it's just been, it's here the more, and it's growing. It's things, you know, shopping and things like that. And then um, places like the Play Place and the next chapter and um, those types of things, honestly, they just make a difference. They make a huge difference. I totally agree. Thank you. Do you have anything to add, Logan? Yeah, um, I just think that, I mean, since we moved back and when I was gone for so long, there's been so many things just combining the schools, making the new elementary school, um, the new, C I mean, things that I'm involved with, the CAC house, and things that 
I think this we need to keep, to keep pro progressing on everything, like um, this staying with the times and making sure that we compete with bigger cities in this in this small town. And I think we do a great job of that um, because I mean, jobs are you know growing. People are moving here all the time. I see it all the time. There's new uh, there's new different neighborhoods popping up all the time, and you're like, man, that's in the city, you're like. Um, but yeah, I think we do a great job. I think we covered everything. So great, thank you, Kevin and Melanie. You like that I'm standing right behind you like this. <laughs> uh, both you, your children, and now both sets of parents live here and call Jasper home. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you see Jasper serving the needs of different generations? Um, first off, we're grateful that Kevin's parents, after 15 years of begging, pleading, moved to Jasper. So um, they moved here in 2020, which was the pandemic, and we told them that, you know, everybody in Jasper is so nice, there's so many things to do, and then things <laughs> shut down, and we promised them that things would come back alive. So let's not talk about that. But ultimately, I think, you know, generationally, our kids have great schools, great extracurricular activities for us. You know, great jobs are in Jasper, and, and really to be able to raise a family in an environment that, that you're comfortable and safe. Um, you know, for our parents, Kevin's parents moving here, both of our parents really, um, you know, it, it's not crazy. It's, it's a slower pace. Uh, traffic is not wild. My parents spend some of their time in Florida, and, and it makes me nervous when they drive out of their neighborhood. Um, so I think. Um, we're just so blessed here. I think sometimes we don't pause and, and really understand that, but there's lots of things that are also like kind of that all generations appreciate. I think a lot of them have been shared today. So I think that's really special. It's a really interesting perspective that you two have to see all of the different age groups. So it's really great. Over the last few years, we have seen Jasper heavily invest in our amenities for our community, the Riverwalk, the Ten Clark Cultural Center, the Parklands, the Square, the Pool, and the Community Rec Center we have coming up. Eber, I'll bring the mic to you. You talked about this a little bit on your hidden gem, but how important are these amenities to you? Very. Uh, I feel I like walking around the Square now because it, it looks revitalized. It feels... Uh, uplifting and, and welcoming, just swinging uh, by the swings. I showed the fire pit to my parents over the winter. Um, they were a, a fan of it. So it's those little things that really bring an impact to little little situations that you can be having. Um, yeah, it's amazing. There's def definitely growth for the future. Uh, there's a new pool. There's other uh, establishments that I don't want to get too ahead of myself because there's still fundraising for it. But uh, we are, we are hopeful that these things are going to be built and in return um, attract people and attract younger generations, older generations, anyone that's wanting to participate or get involved or work or uh, yeah, just have fun. Jeremiah, you have a kind of an interesting perspective being on the square and seeing uh, the activity that's happening down there. Do you think that these amenities attract new citizens? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that if if we were just now trying to move to Jasper, um, these would be the first things we'd look for. We'd look for things like the Parklands and the Riverwalk and the Cultural Arts Center and the library. We'd look for a great bookstore with great coffee. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I, th I think we, you know, I have a perspective of coming from living in a, a log cabin out in the middle of nowhere with no electricity. We served the people of Rwanda for a long time. We've also lived in Atlanta and Jasper is, um, is great size um, for safety, for raising kids, um, but you have things to do. <laughs> um, and uh, we get to be a part of that now. So yeah, we love it. Logan and April. And I guess you have kiddos, yeah? If you guys get out and about and, and take advantage of those amenities, what, do you, what does that mean to you? Yes, um, we, I, I do a lot. Um, the cultural center, the library, I'm there at least once a week. Um, but then the parklands, we, we really enjoy the parklands and our daughter very much loves the, uh, what is the fountain? The splash pad. Um, and then, uh, so really, yeah, we enjoy the amenities a lot. I don't think that those amenities specifically bring people to Jasper. I think things like our safe, the safety and the, you know, the hospital, our median incomes are what bring people to Jasper. 
schools, um, but I think those things help supplement what we already have established here at Jasper. Yeah, quality of life, right? I think that's so important. And some of those are looking for those things. And so I think it's really great that we have so many available. Miss Virginia, you mentioned earlier that you moved here from the Carmel area. What influence do you believe that Jasper has had, not only on our surrounding communities, but the state of Indiana as a whole? Uh, well, I probably have to kind of harken back to when I was with the ISBDC as a rural navigator. And it was because I got a much wider perspective um, in that I was all over the rural counties in central Indiana helping small businesses. Um, so first and foremost, uh, Jasper is pretty much the economic center for um, certainly within 50 plus miles. I mean, I know there are a lot of other communities um, that surround Jasper that are, certainly I got an earful, are a smidge irritated by the fact that um, uh, they're considered kind of bedroom communities of Jasper, you know, like the Jasper has suburbs. Um, so I'm, I'm not disparaging any of them by any means. Um, but the truth of the matter is that economic development uh, is really driven in a very, very large part by Jasper and the companies that are in Jasper. Um, as far as the larger impact that it has, I think that that's yet to be seen. Uh, I know that um, it's really perfectly positioned for uh, some potential funding that's going to be coming in kind of a corridor between 69 and us, Fort Wayne to us, um, that uh, I think will, will allow Jasper to really um, have a much greater impact than it does now just by its very location and the fact that pe people here actually get off their behinds and work. I mean, I dare you to try to find employees, uh, you know, outside, well, even in Jasper is difficult, but the work ethic here um, uh, is pretty tremendous. So I would say that um, the greatest impact of Jasper is yet to come. So. Right. Okay, Chip. Based on your experience, what area or industry do you see the most opportunity for? I have to say that I went to some people that I know and trust, starting with my amazing wife, when it came to answering this question. Um, I, I believe that the businesses have continued to evolve as I've lived here for now close to 26 years. Uh, and again, have kept the culture of those businesses. Again, I can only speak for Jasper Engines, but I believe that to be true everywhere. I don't. The, the consensus of the folks that I consulted is that we don't necessarily need new businesses, we need more people, and the things that could bring more people would be affordable housing, uh, that's one thing, um, possibly public transportation, I don't know that to be true because I am able to drive, um, but one of the things that, that my, wife, my wife Brenda mentioned was, and some of the folks at Jasper Engines was childcare, um, not necessarily affordable child care, but I, as somebody that does, that's not from here, when I moved here, I had a three-year-old who's now, you know, 28. But I think there are a lot of folks in Jasper who do have and have had extended families. You think about children. Um, do you have an opportunity, if you are in an emergency situation, do you have a family member you are comfortable with, hopefully yes, to leave your children with? But if you're not from here, you don't have that same same option. So maybe extended time with, with daycare would be another thing. So housing, public transportation potentially, and then uh, child care. Thank you. I know those are all hot topics. Melanie and Kevin, do you guys have anything that would enhance your experience with Jasper? Anything to add? So when Chip asked me what I was doing this morning between 8 and 9, I told him I had a meeting. I didn't know he was going to go into my office and take the notes that I had prepared for today for this question. Um, but I would agree, absolutely. I mean, we've got tremendous businesses, tremendous opportunity, and Jasper Engines is not the only company struggling for good people. 3.2% unemployment in Du Bois County, countless job uh, openings. Um, it's just, we need more good people. 
And in order to do that, we need uh, attractive, affordable housing. And I applaud the efforts that's been done in that area so far. We've made some tremendous gains, but we need to continue plowing forward uh, from that. And the only other thing that I would add, and I'm glad I didn't put this in my notes on my desk, is that um, you know we have tremendous opportunity in new jobs. And we're largely known for manufacturing, but within these manufacturing companies are countless opportunities and growth for technology, for IT, for accounting, for finance, for these professional jobs that sometimes aren't tied to manufacturing style businesses. And the more we can get out there with our younger folks and as we're attracting talent that, that these jobs do exist, um, it's not just manufacturing traditional, you know, stereotypical jobs, but these professional uh, jobs that are uh, the way of the future are coming and there are needs currently uh, with all of our businesses. Great job, thank you so much. So this is our final question. Um, thank you all for being here today. We're gonna start with you down here, Logan. So we'll grab that microphone. Um, my last question for you is, can you share an example of a time that you stopped and thought to yourself, I'm really glad I live in Jasper. You can say right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good time. Um, so, I mean, I think we we have a four year old, and uh, I think the just having her and being able to enjoy it with my family, we moved back, and I, I just I'm very thankful that we made that decision a long time ago because um, Evansville, Henderson area, we you know it's only an hour or so away, but it was no family, and you know we, those are the things we thought of if you're in a pinch and you need somebody to watch your kid or whatever, you just got no, you have nobody. So um, those are the moments that I'm very thankful we moved back and. Uh, uh, just you know, shameless plug here too. You know, we are hiring. If you know anybody that's very good, and we need good people. Um, we're we're trying to catch up as well. Um, just kind of piggybacking off what he said. Uh, we have a lot of retirements, and we're just trying to catch up. So if you know anybody that's good that wants to move back, please tell them to come our way. Um, but also, this happened a couple of days ago. I won't say any names or nothing, but uh, there was a medical run we had. And there was a, a gentleman that was having some problems. Ambulance took him to the hospital. Um, I gave the wife a transport to the hospital um, and just kind of talking to her. And they were from another country originally, and they moved back, military stuff. And they lived in Alabama, then they lived in uh, somewhere up north. And I'm like, how the heck did you end up in Jasper? And she said that. It was several years before they moved up north of Indiana. They said that they had somebody in Alabama that told them that they visited Jasper one time and they really, really enjoyed Jasper. It was, it was awesome, and they just talked it up a lot. They, their kids were grown and moved. You know, they were in the military as well. And they, they were like, well, we'll just move to Jasper. And I mean, it's just you just never know. You know, if you go out of town and you're talking to family or anything like that, you never know who you're going to influence to come here. So. Um, I think we all have a really good perception of Jasper, and it's good to keep it that way. So, thank you. We'll just go down the line. Um, I, my moment would be actually it was a couple of weeks ago when the weather was really nice, and I was at the next chapter, and I stepped outside to make a phone call, and I was just standing on the square. I was actually talking to my mom, who has visited here quite a few times from Florida, and they've actually been thinking about buying a house here because they like it so much. Um, and I was just standing on the square, making my phone call, drinking my iced coffee, and I just had one of those, wow, it is. They had just, you know, painted the um, the new little walkways and stuff, and it just had a moment where I, I literally felt like I was in a Hallmark movie. <laughs> and it was just awesome. Thank you. Virginia? I would say every single time I drive on 465. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That's really good. Man, I love living in Jasper. Uh, the exact moment I probably said that, the first time I said that, was December 2nd of 2022. And I remember that date because, so in 2021, when I first moved here, I actually met with met up with Ruger Kirsteins, and we formed the Young Professional Network of Southern Indiana. I was a member of a group similar to that up in Indianapolis, and I wanted to bring that down here to, Indi to not to Indianapolis, to Jasper. And I needed someone to get connected with that knew how Jasper worked and how to recruit people. And that's how I got a hold of Ruger Kirsteins. 
Young, young professional network, so shameless plug here. If you don't have to be young, if you feel young at heart, if you're a professional in the local area, you can join Young Professional Network. The first event is free, and you don't have to be a networker, you don't have to be in sales. Your career is not your end all be all, you just have to be open and willing to share your story to join that group, and you make a lot of connections. That's how I've made a lot of my connections. So the December 2nd, 2022 event was our end of year gala, black tie gala, and we donated over $5,000 to SWICAC, and I was the president at that time, and that was my aha moment. Like, we, we found the place that we want to live. That's awesome. Lauren? We were, we were talking about these questions. It's kind of like an ongoing feeling. Um, once you're in Jasper, it's like, okay, this is where I want to stay. Why would I leave at this point? Um, but I've worked in different healthcare organizations and had a few different jobs here, but I have told him before that these are the best people I've ever worked with. And I don't say that, you know, lightly. Um, it's the best coworkers I've had. And all the people you meet are literally there for you no matter what. So, um, I like that. <laughs> Good. Uh, for me, um, it was the weekend before we uh, had our grand opening, um, and we had all of our volunteers come to our shop uh, just so we could say thank you. And um, man, it was incredibly emotional just looking across this room of people that gave up um, months of their time. Uh, to make it all a reality. Um, and just again, back to that idea of like, this could not have happened anywhere else between the help we got from the city and the help we got from friends and people that we've never even met that just jumped in and believed in what we're doing. Um, that was a, for sure, a, a man, I'm really glad we're here. Awesome, Eber? So for me, two things, uh, opportunity and the people, every single one of you guys here, the opportunity that I've been given at Kip Electronics has been amazing. Um, I've been able to grow professionally, uh, been able to be at events like this um, because they just, they care about the people of the culture. So uh, I'm so grateful for that opportunity. And also with Alasi, Alasi is a 5013C nonprofit. Uh, what that means to me, we serve the Latino population in Dubois County. Um, I love, a month ago, we put on the Latino Culture Fest and it was an amazing opportunity to showcase what we bring to to the area and it was amazing and and between dances uh food blindfolding our mayors and having them try different kinds of appetizers it's it, it's a, it's those little opportunities that, that make this place uh that bring that wow factor to me and the people the southern hospitality is incredibly amazing um you don't find you will definitely not find that in los angeles or florida or any you know it, it's it's unreal um Knowing how much people care about you, regardless if you know if you know them or not, is is incredible. A year ago, my brother had a severe motorcycle accident, um, and my family was in a position where we didn't know what to do. We it was you know every kind of avenue was blocked, um, and we put on a fundraiser. We sold pupusas, and it was an incredible event. The amount of people that turned out turned up for that was amazing, and, and we were able to gather enough money to pay a few hospital bills. Um, so it, it's those little things like that that you see happening um, every other weekend or, or whatever the case may be is really uh, uh, something meaning, meaningful to me because it's, you don't, I haven't found this anywhere else. So that's why I'm glad uh, I'm in Jasper. So because of all you guys too. Thank you. That's awesome. Chip? My wife said I wasn't allowed to use this one because it was kind of cheating, but and I mean this with, with all my heart, that it's kind of every day when you just get to get up. And like you earlier, I'm going off script just a little. Um, but as I did a quick scan, I was trying to listen and do a quick scan from up here. And again, I've only been here 26 years. Some of you have lived here your whole life. When I looked around the room, and I don't know how many people are here and it really doesn't matter, but I counted 64 people that I know their name. And that blows me away. And I think that these three words that I just want to share that are a big part of my life and who I, uh, how, why I believe I got to do, being able to do what I do, and it's communication, awareness, and relationships. So whether I work with you, whether I coached you, whether I coached your kids, which there's some of those in this room, and sorry for any bad words I might have used, um, 
it's the opportunity I get every single day to wake up in a town that I know appreciates me and lets me be who I am without too much judgment. So I'm thankful for that. Thank you. Kevin? Yeah, I think it's easy for us to um, take for granted the things that we have. And this was a really easy question for me. And I don't know that there's one definitive moment, but it's really about every time I leave Jasper. And yeah, you can go and you can visit some great places, but I've said countless times on my trips, whether they're business trips or vacations or whatever, I just want to go home. So for me, it's about any time I leave. And for me, a couple of months ago, we unfortunately um, utilized our healthcare system here in Jasper Memorial Hospital, and I'm so grateful for the awesome staff that we have. Um, but Kevin's dad actually spent a couple of weeks in the hospital, and when I went to visit one day, I don't know, over lunch at the end of the day, I'm not sure, but um, I saw this beautiful flower arrangement. And as I'm walking over to read it, it says, from your friends at the Midwest Cafe. And I'm like, is that not the sweetest thing? So Kevin's dad is a regular there, and they were kind enough to send him flowers as they were worried about him and had missed him for a couple of weeks. So I think that just goes to show you how, how generous and kind people are here. So let's all have lunch tomorrow at the Midwest Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, they would freak out. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to these panelists. We have a little something for you before you leave. Take a run off. But I really hope that this all um, really gave you an opportunity to stop and think, when was the last time you stopped to say, I'm really glad I live in or work in Jasper. We have a very, very special place. And um, we're so glad that you're all here. So I get to now pull a number for this Jasper flag, which is really exciting. So find your ticket. They're pink. Okay, hopefully you're still here. All right, the lucky winner is 708560. Yay, come on up. Congratulations. You can fly it with pride, thank you. All right, so we have come to an end. We're a little bit after one o'clock. My last duty is to pass along the gavel to Tony. And it's not just a little gavel, it's this gavel. So congratulations. Thank you all for coming today and sharing in this wonderful spirit. Be safe, have a great day.